The other day I asked you guys what farms you struggled with or wanted to see me attempt, and boy did you not disappoint. You brought cobblestone farms, cobblestone farms, and more cobblestone farms. But we're going to tackle that at the end of the video. The first one I want to look at is really interesting from Toastosaurus, a compact tree farm. And you know, Toast, I do agree with you. Compact tree farms are a struggle because usually when we're talking about tree farms, we're looking at a structure like this. It's big, it's bad, it's very efficient, but it doesn't fit into a lot of spaces that, you know, aren't exactly this. Now to design a compact one, we still need to have the same elements, right? We need to have a saw, we need to have a deployer, we need to have storage, okay? And we're probably gonna have rotation as well, but I'm gonna see if we can't build something that's tiny or even maybe tileable. So I'm thinking we're gonna have a deployer on the ground like this pointed upwards at our uh, dirt block here. Well, I suppose obviously we need a saw. And you know what? We're going for compactness, not beauty. So we're actually gonna put a mechanical bearing here and kind of abuse a little feature of create. I'll also go ahead and power this with a water wheel just to show that it's possible. So what we're looking at right here is something pretty basic. And fun fact, the spinning of this saw does actually work. So if we do put ourselves the quote unquote bottom of a tree, you'll notice as the saw comes around, it will begin to break it. And this is of course extremely useful because it means we have access to um, a, a contraption and contraptions are very good at picking up items. Truth is though, we're gonna want a chest on our contraption. So we don't even need that gearbox. We do need the gearbox, but we don't need that shaft. So this now becomes our contraption here, and that means that all the goodies are gonna go right inside of this chest. Hmm. This might be a very vertical form, but if I can get it to be one block wide, I'm happy, you know? That might not be possible, though. Right now, of course, the biggest struggle is how do we get the sapling out of this chest and into this deployer, and then we actually have a compact tree farm. But, of course, portable storage interfaces need a pretty decent amount of room right they'll only work at least at this distance and i believe the trick with using them vertically to keep them permanently kissing doesn't work anymore i don't think all right but i'm going to consider verticality still decent because most people could build into the ground so we're going to build this pretty vertical all right at least we're going to start building this pretty vertical the knowns is that the saw has to be there that there's no no doubt about it the saw has to be there and the deployer must be on this block right here. It would be nice to have it though, like powered by the uh, saw or powered by the same contraption that powers the saw. This is 100%. Maybe the chest goes on the back and the portable storage interface goes here and we have a P portable PSI, portable storage interface, whatever you call them here. But of course that's tough. And I don't think that works either. I think that, I think that is broked. I think that is very broked. Testing, I'm gonna use creative motors. Oh, it does work. Okay. Definitely uglier, though, because it's not centered right. Definitely uglier, but functional. Very functional. Now, of course, how would we get this to put inventory into this without using, like... Well, I guess we could use fans, huh? No, actually, because what I was thinking is potentially having, like, that diagonal shoot thing, right? So it falls down here and then it's blown up here, but the air current would go through both of these. And there's also no filtering and no way to actually remove the saplings. So, yeah, okay. One thing I do need to remember is you actually have to take the saplings out of the machine. Okay, so let's say then the items get dropped from... We'll call it just a smart shoot just to be fun. So if I throw... Uh, if I put, rather this into there it should drop down and go across yeah it doesn't get stuck hey, hey we might have figured this out and that uh won't go up until i power this thing and we'll just power that at max speed boom ah uh, that might be it oh wait we haven't powered the okay now we actually have to figure out how to power everything so this actually works as like a functioning in world component and once again, I'm going for tile ability, okay? Tile ability. So welcome to gearbox and probably linear, or not linear, I'm not linear, what is it called? Chain drive town, baby. Everyone's favorite. And I'll grab out the belts just in case. So what I'm trying to avoid is having any um, 
shafts facing out on the side. So it won't, like, break anything to be touched. Also, this looks really cool. You don't have to use chain drives. I just like to use chain drives. Everyone gets on me for using chain drives, but I like them. But now, we hook it up to a preferably fast source, I guess. So for this, I am just going to use a creative motor. There are plenty of ways to get fast sources. Um, easy peasy and lemon squeezy. So I'm going to cheat here because I'm in creative mode. Ha ha ha. These are pushing. That is pushing. Wow, all the directions are immediately correct. Everything seems to be working. Those are still kissing. I think we've done it. So now we put a sapling down and wait. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm going to use bone meal. Okay, so the tree is broken. The items go on the ground. Do the saplings go up into the deployer? Oh, wait. The saplings go up, but not into the deployer because that's a shoot. <laughs> okay, okay. Hold on. A little more theory crafting. A little more theory crafting. <laughs> um, could I, <laughs> could I chain these? <laughs> Does that work? Does that work? Okay, round two. Bap. Uh-huh. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 I got a Rosellus. We somehow need to pull the saplings up. So I can do this. And I don't want to use a belt to move them because that requires shafts to be open on either side and power to come from the sides. And then it wouldn't be one block wide tile. Level. Hold on. Hold on. I mean, maybe we pull out mechanical arms. Uh, we could put a mechanical arm here, like that. Then, of course, saplings would need to go onto a depot close enough to this thing, and everything else would have to pass through. Or the mechanical arm just controls the entire thing, so this depot goes here, because um, we could take this guy and say, this is your first input, this is your second input take from this guy, and tell it to prefer first target. So it's always going to prefer to put saplings into this guy, but otherwise, it will put it into the up. So this should work? Wait, is this deployer too low on the ground? It is too low on the ground. Oh, shoot. Shoot. It's too low on the ground. Uh-oh. It's trying to place a sapling here. Obviously, it can't do that. I mean, this works. It did filter it. Okay, but, but it's too low. And I can't raise it up one in its current state. Uh-oh. I wonder how many people were like, what are you doing? Actually, actually, probably not that big of a deal. Probably not that big of a deal. Potentially not that big of a deal. Could be a deal. No, no, because we could just do a little gearboxing here, right? That should be everything functioning now. I don't even want to say that because I feel like I'm going to screw something up. Yes! <laughs> there we go. One wide, tileable, ugly as hell, but it works. Create mod tree farm. There we go. So all of your items get stored right with the trees. And I mean, this works best, I suppose, if you do put it with like a very fast input speed. It's going to look so silly. Oh my god, that looks so silly. Uh, but I imagine once the tree grows, it's pretty incredible. Yep. Nice. There's, yep. Okay. And yeah, this guy already has, so the saplings will move through there. Beautiful. I mean, this <laughs> I love this thing going. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I love it. I love it. Very nice. Well, there you go, Toastosaurus. Your compact tree farm. You can line them up, make them as efficient as you want. So we don't need these anymore. Oh, you know what? I think I could even move the mechanical arm um, just so that it's not like hanging out the back of it, kind of. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I could put the mechanical arm uh, down here just so it's a little bit nicer. So there you go, the final rendition. I will schematic this and put it in the schematics channel of my Discord, link in the description. This next farm idea comes from Jack Sparrow himself and really interests me, a fast honey glazed farm, honey glazed ham farm from Farmer's Delight. And honey glazed ham isn't too bad, berries, honey, rice, all of that, except for the smoked ham, which you can see you need to cut from a pig and, uh, well, pigs are slow. Or a hoglin. And the hoglin, that's the key. So this farm is actually going to take us into the nether. To a hoglin farm. This is, I think, the Razeworks design. I don't know. I got it off a tutorial from someone else. Um, it's just any hoglin farm. These are pretty great. If you fly up into the sky, hoglins start spawning, and they fall into this pit. Now, normally, you kill them with fire, collect the pork chops, and have infinite food. And that'll still happen, but we want to do it with Create. 
because we have to. The only way to actually automate this is with deployers and knives, and I think knives will take durability damage, but if you use diamond knives, which is only six diamonds for this entire farm, you should probably end up having more food than you'll ever need for any playthrough ever. But first things first, we just want a row of deployers facing upwards, which isn't too hard to do, especially, you know, if you're already in the nether. Boop, boop, boop. And then we want to feed all of them with knives. Now, I know I'm talking like I know what I'm doing here, but I haven't actually tested any of this. This is all theory and hearsay. And then I believe these guys need to be placed into punch or attack mode in order to, you know, attack. And I think we're going to just put slabs underneath everything. Now, they will collect whatever items they get out of the hoglands. Uh, so we should be able to use, like, belts and funnels to pull them out, since I think the farm has to be this high off of the nether roof. Alright, we're gonna filter these to say, uh, no knives, don't, don't take knives up, this is the deny list. And then, brass, there we go. And by the way, if you don't know how to get on the roof of the nether, or you don't know how to make a hoglin farm, I'm not gonna cover that, because there's 8,000 billion videos on how to do those. So, th that, that's gonna be your go-to. Not me, I'm a create guy. I'm going to give myself night put, night vision. I just realized it's kind of dark up here. I'm going to give myself some night vision. Bonk. Well, now we have to deal with potion particles this entire time, but whatever. So, one theory I have is that, you know, normally you do kill them with lava. And I'm thinking, if you still kill them with lava, do they still, like, cook the food when they die? Also, you know what, maybe we want this to be open. It's not like their drops are going to be flying everywhere, but... I guess my- I, I'm, I'm hoping that if we kill them with lava, like if they're on fire rather when they die, it'll still work. Though I don't think I want lava all over the deployers, huh? Uh, we can do trapdoors, I think. Trapdoors is a good idea. There, so now there is a solid ground, the lava doesn't flow down all the way, so they're not like sitting in it. Because I don't want them sitting in it. And, um, they'll still get probably punched to death with knives. Oh, that's nice. And then, and then I just guess the, the real question is, does this actually work, you know? I guess we should really try that out, because if we need a smoking setup, so be it. But I'd love to have the added efficiency of just, like, not needing that. That would be super duper cool, wouldn't it? And as always, I'm gonna cheat, and I'm gonna use creative, uh, motors for this. I mean, you know, they're not hard to power. If you need easy power generation, water wheels work with lava, too. And I imagine you want these deployers to be moving decently fast. Okay, so... A hoglin spawns in and is going to... Well, that's a baby. That doesn't help. I need an adult hoglin. There we go. The adult hoglin freaks out, runs away, and is definitely getting knifed. That's for sure. Okay. Oh, on the ground. I thought deployers sucked up items. Oh, you know what, though? It's probably the lava that's killing them, isn't it? It's, it's definitely the lava. Also, I should have given myself infinite night vision. So the lava is what is killing them. Okay. Unfortunate. Okay, let's try that again. So we have some hoglins spawning in, freaking out, having a bad day. They're running off the edge. Did I build it wrong? Oh, it's probably this. Okay, hopefully this means they don't try to run off the edge. You know, this is why we test things. This is why we do these things. Okay. A hoglin spawns. It's freaking out. It's having a bad time, and it goes into the killing chamber. And it's going to get beaten to death, just like it should. It takes a little bit. Okay, but that should put items onto the belt, probably. And ham. Boom. Ham farm right there. These hoglin farms are fast. They'll spawn in like a ton of hoglins at once. And hopefully they don't go running off the edge anymore. Yeah, okay, they don't seem to. They all end up with the deployers, and they're all getting punched. And it should be spitting out ham, baby. Ham, 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 and more ham. I mean, look at all that ham. It's a horrible sound. The AFK is about like 100 blocks in the air. Whatever. I mean, you guys understand. It's it's a ham farm. And I mean, the other parts of this farm really aren't that big of a deal, right? Like a bee farm, especially a nether-based bee farm, should be pretty easy. Uh, I know there's, like, more efficient ways of doing it than this, right? But the way bee farms work in the Create mod is you can just have a ton of bees and a bunch of pipes. Uh, because pipes actually connect to beehives uh, as fluid containers, and they will be able to actually suck honey right out of them. It's so cool. It's super amazing. 
Uh, we could get, you know, a bunch of flowers down here and just encase this area in glass and spawn in a bunch of bees. And then we have a great time. Gonna make sure the bees are properly, you know, encased inside of their home. We wouldn't want any runaway bees. And actually doing a bee in, or uh, doing a bee, doing a bee farm in the nether is the more lag efficient way to do it because without the day-night cycle, there's nothing that causes the bees to kind of mass exodus from their, um, from their hives, which is a big lag issue when you do beehives or bee farms in the overworld. And then I guess it's just a matter of having a lot of bees, just a ton of bees, large amount of bees. I love Minecraft bees. They're like, they're amazing. Oh, I made a baby bee. I guess baby bees work too, don't they? Because they pick up honey, huh? Look at all these bees. Is this enough bees? I, I wasn't counting, but a lot of bees. All right, if you want it to be, f the more bees you have, the faster this is. Yeah, this is the good thing. No bees pathfind out through this one hole I made. Eh. Beautiful. And they go in, right? They make the honey. And then you just need an output pipe into a fluid tank. And you'll be farming honey in no time. Boop, 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 boop. I'm sure there are infinitely more efficient, like, honey farms than the one I made. Like, space efficiency and time efficiency and whatever. But this is all you really need. I think if I were to, like, up the random tick speed here, I don't know if bees are affected by random tick, but, but if they were, you could up the random tick speed and test this out. But I'll probably leave this running for a little bit just to see how well it does. So this is honey. This is, uh, ham. Ham bone. Well, I guess we should take out the ham and start cooking it, huh? Yeah, okay. And you know what? It wouldn't be bad to use vaults here because these farms produce a particularly silly amount of resources so you might actually want a large vault here and then heck you can even just have like a depot sitting right here right that you use uh to filter out the ham and then have a smoker set up connected right to it so something like that right when ham enters it so i'll i'll, I'll spawn in more hoglins there we go, okay, and this probably isn't 100% efficient, but it doesn't have to be because of how efficient it is. Like, a few minutes of AFKing this thing, and you are going to produce an insane amount of smoked ham. Uh, so there we go, it, it, like, one ham is going to come out, it's going to build up, and then kind of like a stack of ham comes out, and you start creating smoked ham. Now, this stuff is either going to have to go to the overworld, or it's going to have to go, or the overworld stuff is going to have to come here because there is an ingredient that kind of requires overworld, but we'll get to that. A berry farm is about as easy as they come. It is just a regular crop farm. And just to show you, by the way, yep, magma wheel. Pretty cool, right? And it's great, too, because I'm pretty sure berries are one of the only, like, crop items that do not require water to grow. So I think they grow in the nether? I actually have zero idea if they actually grow in the nether. I, I don't actually know. Yeah, it's about as easy as they get. I mean, this is a standard crop farm right here. Oh, hey, and we're already producing honey, which we already have, what, that is that three buckets of it? Two, two and a half buckets of? It's not been long, so this is not, <laughs> that, that's not bad. And buckets and buckets of honey turn into tons and tons of bottles. There, that's our berry farm. I'm going to turn up the random tick speed, though. I have no idea if this grows in the nether. Oh, yep, they grow in the nether. <laughs> that's so cool. That's super cool, okay. They grow slowly, it seems. They grow slowly in the nether, apparently, but they do grow in the nether. Like, if we if we pump it way up, they will grow up, they will get harvested. Okay, cool. So that is a proper berry farm, and I mean, everyone knows, easy enough, you can store things in a chest with your shoots. Bap. Just like that. And now, the sweet berries inside become sweet berries inside here. It's possible that they grow really slowly in the nether, so maybe you want to come in and, like, bone meal them up. Or you could just build this part in, you know, the overworld. Uh, you don't have to build this in the nether. I just thought it was cool that you could build most everything in the nether. The only problem is rice. I mean, one, it requires water to grow because it's a crop. And two, it requires water to grow because I believe it has to grow literally inside of water. Very nice. So at this point, what you could do is you could use a train that goes back to the overworld or a minecart that goes back to the overworld or anything that can transport. Well, I guess it would be a train, right? Because trains can transport liquids and items. And you would have the train come on into the nether, pick up the sweet berries, pick up the uh, smoked ham, pick up the honey. I mean, that's pretty great, right? We already have most of it. And, and I'm just curious. 
because I like to show, or rather not because I'm curious, but it's fun to watch this. Here, I'll turn off like that so you can see a little bit better in the nether. You can see as I get up here, ah, the fog. It's erasing my ability to show you the hoglin spawns. Okay, hold on. Well, just envision the fact that there are many hoglins here. I can drop down, maybe we'll see them. Ooh. Oh, I bet, I bet, hold on, we gotta put slabs on top of all the spawnable things around here to eliminate the things they're spawning with the bees, are they? Okay, so we gotta add some torches to the bee area, don't we? Yes, in bead. I don't know what light level stops the piglins from spawning, so I'm just going to spam a bunch of torches. This would also be fixed if I built, like, a better version of a bee farm, the one that is, like, one high tall, so build that one. I guess. Once again, I, you know, there are a thousand tutorials on how to build really good bee farms, so you could look those up, and they'll be fantastic. Hopefully torches on bee farms don't, like, stop the bees from leaving, but we're gonna assume they don't. Alright, one more try, one more try. I wanna see if this works. Well, it does work, but I wanna show you what working. I tested it earlier, okay? It's a lot of endermen on my minimap. I wonder if I need to be higher. Oh, no, never mind. It works. Okay. Ah! Shoot! They, 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 they spawn with the bees if you don't Huh. I wouldn't build a sweetberry farm on the nether side of things, now that I think about it. Okay, as few spawning spaces around this as possible, but you get the point, okay? Hoglin farm here, make a bee farm better than this, build this part in the overworld. The last thing we need is a rice farm. If I remember correctly, rice has to grow in one deep water, I think? So, like, you would put water like this, and then... Yeah, rice grows right on the dirt. Okay, cool. So that's how rice works. Uh, so this would not be a very difficult farm to design as all. I mean, to design at all is what I meant to say. Once again, just a standard crop farm, really. The only thing is I believe you harvest rice panicles. And rice panicles, uh, I think this recipe is, is the recipe added by Farmer's Delight, actually? It's like, cool. Yeah, you could just grind it into rice or you could crush it into rice. Or you could mix it into- well, that's biomass. In any case, you just use a millstone or crushing wheels and you grind that stuff into rice. Oh, and this stuff seems to go pretty fast. I don't think I'm going to show you, like, the third spinning crop farm of the game. Just imagine you put water on top of everything instead of there not being water on top of everything. Although, now that I think about it, there is a bit of nuance to this one, isn't there? Okay, you know what, we'll design this. Because rice doesn't drop itself. Okay, there's a bit of nuance, there's a bit of nuance. Okay, repurposing the tree farm, which, like, grew every single tree inside of it the second I started to do so, we're gonna get this rice farm set up. And, like I said, this thing, the big difference is that it's going to be filled with water. We have ourselves a simple little rice farm here, and if I am correct, and we, uh, random tick speed to 300, it should work, right? Yeah, okay, so it works... But what it picks up is... What does it pick up? Does it... Oh, it instant replants. Oh, but it's not... Is it dropping the rice on the ground? Where is the rice going? Um, one rice panicle. Two. It's like harvesting them too early. Oh, do the harvesters have to be a level up, maybe? Is that is that what it is? Okay, hold on, hold on. This is why I always like these these videos. I love learning things about different mods and create. Let's see what happens here. Alright, that harvests those. Okay, and then... Okay, that's how you get the rice panicles. Okay, so you don't want to harvest from the bottom. Interesting. Very interesting. But of course, as you can see, that's not what you actually use to plant the rice. Okay, we can go back to a regular game tick speed. So that's not what you actually use to, to plant rice. You have to process it and then work it back into the system, which is an easy, easy, easy loop. But I figured I'd go through it. All right, shoot onto a belt into a brass funnel, and the brass funnel is going to be set to its default configuration, which is split, okay? So the panicles will come through. Um, another thing we should probably do is make sure there's at least tw uh, two at a time, right? So we're always di um, uh, dividing by an even number, okay? So we're gonna say this, make sure there is always two, or at least two, or sorry, 
at least two. Okay, there we go. And we're going to split. So half goes on one end, half goes on the other end. Actually, hold on. Being gooby, being silly, <laughs> being funny. Give me a second. Because they're both going to the same thing. They're both going to crushing wheels. So they actually, they should be split after the crushing. After the crushing. Hot tip for belt base, crushing wheels, shaft in the middle, vertical gearbox, crushing wheel, crushing wheel. That's how they roll. Okay, there we go. So now we say they're going to be split here. And then for the time being, I'm just going to filter out. They'll drop like, oh, what is it they drop? When you crush them, they'll drop straw. I don't really care about straw. I'm sure it could be used for a, a myriad of m amazing things. I mean, let's see what straw can be used for. You can make mud, you can make rope, you can make leads, you can make mud, you can make straw, you can make mud, you can make canvas, you can make tatami. A lot of cool stuff. But for my purposes, we're just going to drop it out of the belt. And then we'll split them off here. So easy peasy here, we can take ourselves a smart shoot put it on top of this and then set our weighted ejector on here bam so what'll happen is the rice that is ground through this path is going to be shot back in and go down into the portable storage interface which should put it back into this um it'd be more intelligent actually to have a buffer chest here so you know what you know what i'll be good we'll do it that way we'll do it the right way so this little tower here I think this weighted ejector will be able to reach that, though. I'll have to pull the belt out, yeah. Um, it says it'll work. This rice, on the other hand, is your good rice. That That's the rice that you want to keep on going. So, let's just hook it up, see what happens. Okay, so part of it goes there, one of it goes there. We should see rice. Wait a minute. You don't have to replant the... It's uh, come to my attention you don't have to replant the rice. Uh, moving on. So, you've got yourself your completely normal rice, uh, grinding machine. No convolutions, no overcomplications, <laughs> none of that. And then if I'm not wrong, a cooking pot, you can just, like, put the stuff into, right? Like, you can funnel into this? Like, that, that would, that would do it. That'll do it. Goes right in. Uh, nope. That's not right. I hope you guys enjoy these kind of like learning with me farms. I hope they give you ideas for other farms, you know, like that's my intention with this is to give you guys like a kind of feeling that not only can you build the farm that I'm building, but you can like make your own or it kind of gives you like an understanding of maybe the thought process that goes into making these. Okay, that should work. That gets crushed. That goes in. There we go. It's cooking it without a bowl. Oh, I see. You need a bowl in here. Okay, for this... I mean, I don't think anyone needs a bowl farm, right? Like, you could just put a bowl in there, and you're good. And then you have the cooked rice. But, how do you get it out? Oh, I know. I think with Central Kitchen, there's like a cooking... Yeah, cooking guide. Okay? And what you would do here is rice... Cooked rice, right? Is that how it works? Let me check. You can, like, input recipes and stuff into this. Let me see if you can do cooked rice. Boom. Got it. So this is a cooked rice recipe. And if I take a blast burner and I put it here and I do this and I do this, he's now a chef. And that should allow a mechanical arm to work with this, I think. Oh. Oh. It's a doing. It took the rice right out of there. Whoa. Holy. Does it take the bowls, though? Doesn't seem like it. Well, hey! That's really cool. Okay, that makes life a super duper easy. And I mean, like, what you could do is you could just bulk craft a bunch of bowls, because at a certain point, you're gonna have more food than you ever need. Like, I think with this farm, bunch of bowls, you're never running out of food. And that should fill up the bowl slot and then go into the hopper. Nice! Okay. Oh, that's sick! And I mean, from this point onwards, it's just about transporting your resources, right? You now have everything you need for honey glaze dam, I'm pretty sure, right? Yep, you got your sweet berries, you got your sweet berries, honey bottle, you know, you just take the liquid, put it into a spout, right? Super easy. 
bowls, cooked rice, smoked ham, that's already being made, all of that, you know, you can imagine coming through the nether portal, choo-choo, and then it is, of course, mechanical crafters. The only thing you have to worry about, I would imagine, is that the mechanical crafters are going to spit out the bowls that were actually, the bowls in the bottle that was used. So, like, you would have an on-site, like, honey bottling, and then, you know what, you would even just filter the bowls back into this chest. You have infinite bowls. The final bowl you would need goes in the mechanical crafter. But again, I mean, a hopper, a chest, some bowls. Put the bowls in, you know what I mean? Like, just like this, and you've got enough bowls, and then you just manually keep it stocked, because you'll get the bowl back from actually, like, finishing your meal. And I'm pretty sure honey glazed ham turns into some of the best food, like, out of Farmer's Delight, I'm pretty sure. Turns into, yeah, it gives that much hunger, that much saturation, that's a ton, and then nourishment for five minutes, which means you don't even need to, like, eat for five minutes. So this thing is, like, super duper powered. And I think I'll let you guys figure out, you know, like, what your bottling stations would look like and stuff like that. I mean, maybe, maybe in my mechanized series I'll even tackle this farm, because that was actually really fun. I think I, I think I might even want to do that. This was a fun farm. Um, I think for the purposes of this video, there's no reason for me to, like, actually stitch everything together, because, I, like, this is about experimentation and, and seeing, you know, what works and how things do, and, like, learning about how rice crops are, are, are managed, I think, is really cool from Farmer's Delight, and this actually is a really surprising and cool, uh, interaction with Create Central Kitchen. This next farm is pretty interesting. From Dragonus 13, a modular redstone farm using the Cinder Flower and Strength Potion recipe. Now, they go on to explain they want it to be modular, so, like, at different stages of the game, you know, it could be better or worse. But, the only way to actually use a modular red- or rather, a redstone farm in general, is to be at the very end stage of the game. Automating potions, especially strength potions, not only require you to already have blaze burners, but actually, like, commandeer a blaze spawner. So, I'm just gonna build a redstone farm. And the ingredients here is potions of strength and cinder flower. There are some packs that allow you to actually like automate netherrack and stuff like that. Like I, this is crafts and additions. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty easy thing. You can do that. But we're going to assume that your cinder flower is an input because technically, well, hold on, not technically. In vanilla create, you can't automate netherrack. If you argue with me in the comments, I will, I don't know. I'll bury your real life house in netherrack. But strength potions here, we can automate. That's awkward potions, blaze powder, overheated blaze burner, and, you know, nether wart. And I don't think I'm gonna have to tell anybody how we're gonna automate nether wart. Indeed, a shocking turn of events, it's, it's a rotating crop farm. And, you know, I, I, I know this is wrong, but I used to swear nether wart had to grow in, like, a certain light level? Well, a Google to the wiki tells me I was wrong. It doesn't seem like that was ever the case. Maybe it was a myth or something. In any case, it, it's another word farm. I, I mean, you could stack it up if you wanted to make it more efficient. Now, the thing is, we need ourselves a blaze farm, and they're definitely possible with the create mod, if not a little finicky. And the reason you really have to be at the end stage is because we need to go to the nether and we need trains. So, find yourselves a nether fortress, probably not, you know, with a command. Let's see, uh-huh, 750 blocks away, let's go. Uh, this, this is not a nether fortress. Oh, this, here we go. And totally and legitimately in survival mode, go looking for a blaze spawner. Ta-da! So, what we're gonna do here is, uh, turn down my mob volume. And how's about some night vision potions too. We're gonna build a train. Minecarts can attach to spawners and stuff, but they actually can't travel through nether portals. So you need to be train stage. I'd recommend having like fire resistance potions while doing this legit in survival because it will be annoying. So you need yourself a train tracks, your train station, your train casing, all that good yummy stuff. Drop a station, uh, preferably not in that direction. Drop a station underneath your spawner and get to building. And then, you're just gonna make sure your little blaze spawner is, uh, attached. Probably gonna want train controls, and a seat, I think, is required for a train. Shows how much I work with these things. Glue the fella together, and you should be able to assemble. Bap! And there you go. Not only does it disable the blaze spawner, but the blaze spawner is actually connected to the train. And last thing we have to do is just make a nether portal, and hope the blazes don't bother us too much. Make sure to generate the portal on the other side, because trains don't work through non-generated... Wow! That was not planned! That was actually not planned. What a... Whoa! Is this an... 
is this an underwater desert sandstone mine shaft into zombie spawner what's the golden apple and a music disc and a sophisticated backpack what the heck well okay in any case uh place your uh, tracks into your magical supremo portal like that and uh i guess you could build out tracks on the other side i, I guess goodbye zombie spawner but in any case, the point is, congratulations, you've just heisted a blaze spawner. Ta-da! So when you reassemble the train, the blaze spawner will be a functional blaze spawner. You just have to reassemble the blaze spawner wherever you would like it to be in the overworld. Now we're going to need a special killing chamber for the blazes because blaze rods that, you know, create blaze powder, those are not a regular drop. They are a player drop, so these need to be killed by deployers. I didn't say it was going to be a cheap farm. I think it works out to be a 9x9 nine nine platform of deployers is what we're going to do. And you know what, I'll be nice about things. I'll, I'll center it onto, uh, onto this farm. See if I can't get a nice little schematic out of this. Actually, hold on. You know what? Maybe I don't have to be silly. Let's think about this. We're going to use the nether brick to make the blazes feel a little bit more at home. I wouldn't want them to you know, feel lonely or anything. And I'm just going to use red nether brick to mark the center. Essentially, we're just going to be building a fairly box standard um, spawner chamber, right? So that the blazes all spawn in a box instead of all over your world, all over your farms, and they destroy you. I don't think that's what you guys are going for with this farm. I believe it's one, it's one, two, three, four, spawner, one, two, three, and then ceiling, I think. Makes sense to me. But just in case, I'll do it four on top four on the bottom so you want your spawner to be here and i get to make this all pretty but we're definitely going to be using a lot of fans i think fans are going to be how we're going to be moving the blazes around um i don't know if blazes always float to the bottom like if we can just assume they'll spawn and float to the bottom or if we're going to need to use fans to push them to the bottom and then hope that we could both use fans keeping them down and also keeping them like moving across we might have to do some really specific like speed tuning here and there i mean mob farms get really really fun because create doesn't have like it create isn't so much designed to farm mobs as it is designed to farm like recipe based interactions so you get to have a lot of fun when you're thinking to yourself like ooh, you know okay another question i am wondering is you can wash a blaze actually and it will kill it but will it drop blaze rods? I don't think it will, but maybe we should find that out. All right, let's see what happens. Ah, it kills it pretty quick, too. That's not bad. But do you drop? I don't think it will. It's not a guaranteed drop, so I suppose I'll just sit here and do this until I either definitely don't get blaze rods or definitely do. But it's not looking good. My next question, though, is will the blaze... So it seems like blazes will only float upwards if they're aggroed. Do blazes aggro through glass? That's the next question. Doesn't look like it. Hey, buddy. Hello. Okay, cool. So then I will replace this bottom row with fans, and then we'll connect these all together. If these fans are going at 128, could we put a fan here going at 256, and then it'll, like, shove them into this corner? Or I suppose, actually, the fan would be here. Is that how it works? Zoom. Uh, seems to be. Okay, so we could shove all the blazes into this corner and then just have a deployer, like, beating them to death. Well, probably sorting them to death. I believe deployers do use durability. I think that's, like, the quote-unquote big downside of this, I suppose. But it's a lot better than having a floor of deployers. Okay, Mr. Deployer, have a sword. And the only thing blazes drop is blaze rods. So we can get a smart shoot and tell it to only take out blaze rods. Because we don't want it to spit the sword out. That would be annoying. So let's just spawn a blaze in here somewhere. Boop. Make sure it gets blown about. Pretty efficiently. It does definitely, it does jump up a little bit though. So maybe we actually do want to put um, like a block here. And then maybe a slab underneath of it, just so that, like, we don't have any blazes, like, 
So that if there's multiple of them, right, they don't get, like, stuck necessarily. They seem to aggro on the on the thing, which is a good sign. That should mean maybe, yes, we are getting blaze burners, or blaze burners. We are getting blaze rods. Does the sword take durability damage? Ouch, it does. Okay, so finite amount of swords. I mean, truth be told, you could put, like, a hopper um, of iron swords or even have, like, some way of putting swords in. I guess, um, for simplicity's sake, we'll do a, uh, chest here and a hopper. And then you can just fill this with a type of sword. I mean, you could fill it with looting swords if you, you know, if you want to. You could enchant a bunch of iron swords with looting, you know. Um, I think, you know, you're at this stage of the game, you should at least be able to fill a chest with, like, iron swords, and this will last you a ton of blazes, especially if you put unbreaking on all of them, if you take the time to do that, you could even input, you know, a better sword to start with. I don't think I need this slab, especially because it looks kind of ugly, so we'll just have that there, and then the last thing is I do want to cap this, because I am worried about blazes coming out, but we are going to give ourselves a spawner, because we're in creative mode, like that. That goes there. Blaze spawn egg to modify it. There you go, blaze spawner. Uh, and I think blazes will spawn in any light level, so you can have glass. It doesn't have to be tinted, hopefully. Actually, we shouldn't have that there, because if a blaze spawns on top of it, it'll get stuck. Also, might be too much cope. It might, might need to be a tinted glass for this thing to actually work. Or that's just not how the spawner works in creative mode, but we're going to try tinted glass and also fix the design issue here. Oh no, blazes do spawn in. Okay. My spawner might function differently because it's like a commanded in creative mode spawner. I, I I don't exactly know if it'll work the same, but it did look like, you know, replacing the frame glass with tinted glass might do something. Even though it's uglier. Oh, shoot. Okay, so yeah, don't build this thing out of anything um, flammable. They do appear to aggro onto... Um, <laughs> they appear to aggro onto the deployer, which is exactly what we technically really want them to do, okay? Because that means it is counting as a player kill. That's exactly what we want. See, but there's... Okay, so they will eventually come down. Okay, I was going to say, there's the problem, though. Also, I know it'll turn these into smokers. Oh, shoot. Okay, but it comes down. Okay, cool, cool. I was worried that blaze flying away meant like the blazes could get away. But it seems like no matter what, they'll fly to the bottom and then become uh, dead. There we go. Tinted glass does it right. Cool. Look at all these blaze rods we're getting. Six blaze rods crushed them. Like crushing them in crushing wheels is at least 18 blaze powder. And that's a ton of potions. Of course, crushing wheels is exactly what we're going to do for this. We're going to get ourselves a little bit of a belt line going on underneath of this. Bop, bop, right under the farm. Um, I have no idea how you guys would want to power this. I think I'll probably... I'll try to, like, actually come up with, like, a nice power system. But now it's just a little, a little bit of designing. I feel... It feels a little unfortunate for the deployer to be coming out of the bottom... But I think that's probably the best idea because of the way blazes go up and down. So I'm going to leave it like that. And look, I'm not a designer. I'm not here to make these farms look good. I'm here to make them work. Oh, wait. It looks like all the fans can be blowing at the same speed. Oh, that does work. Okay, cool. So I'm just trying to get everything so that it hooks up to one single power input. Just, you know, for nicety's sake. There we go. So that's everything actually hooked up to this one... Mm, little janky power system. I mean, I suppose you can make it look nicer here by doing that and then gearbox there. There, it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, cool. And then you're just gonna fling off tons of blaze powder. And by the way, if you're wondering what to feed your blaze burner, oh, I thought they cannibalize themselves. That's a blaze rods. Is it really? Shoot, they do cannibalize themselves, but not as efficiently as I was hoping. Then, you know what? We'll make this a little smarter. All right. Hold on. I, li I like the idea of making this kind of smart. So we'll say... Uh, take a brass tunnel. And have it output to potentially a depot. And then we want the brass tunnel to be set to... Uh, round robin. 
yeah, round robin, but not forced round robin, okay? Very importantly, not forced round robin. And what this will do, when I hook everything back up, as the blaze rods come through, uh, they'll go through to the crushing wheels, and then one will go through to the depot, right? Another blaze rod comes through, it will go through the crushing wheels and be turned into powder, and as long as this is open, the next one will be turned, it will be stuck there. Why do we do that? Because we're going to be heating the blaze burners with blaze rods. And we can tell a mechanical arm to sit here and take from this depot. Does an awkward potion require uh, heating? It does, okay. But I'm pretty sure we could just have water, nether wart, awkward potion, and blaze powder in the same thing? Let's find out. We also want a buffer chest here since we're going to be creating a ton of this stuff. Like an absolute ton of this stuff. Um, faster than I think anything could ever consume it. So we're going to have um, a fancy schmancy funnel into this as a buffer chest. So then I guess easy enough we have our basin here and literally hopper in the blaze powder like that. Things obviously have to get mixy. Portable storage connection. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. They kiss. Messy little belt line down here to move things over. Get them into the basin. Like that. Blaze burner, which of course you have infinite of at this point with a mechanical arm here. Take from there, give to there. Bap. Cog, cog. There we go. And that'll keep that heated. Should pretty much keep it heated always. Like, I don't know how long a blaze rod heats a blaze burner for, but since the eyes are shut, that at least means it's a probably box standard amount of time. I don't think that'll ever be a problem. It's kind of an abnormal, like, heating farm, but yeah, produces fast enough. Grab a wanky janky uh, water line like that. Mundane potion, is it? Okay. So we need to do a list filter. I think we can do a list filter here. Hopefully this works. I don't know if list filters work here. No. Okay. God about those. Why do those exist? Could I deny list mundane potion? Is that allowed? Okay, cool. Deny list mundane potion. That makes life easy, doesn't it? If I do that, that's moving in the right direction. And then we just need a second gearbox there to get it moving in the correct direction for this belt. And then the nether work goes through. And now it just doesn't want to make any potion? So could I actually just say, just make awkward potions? Yes. I could say that. And if I remove that, it'll just make a ton of weirdness. Yeah, okay. So it can't even, it can't even see that the blaze powder goes with the awkward potion. Just, just checking. It does, right? Strength pots is awkward potion blade powder. All right, so it needs to be needlessly complicated. And the blaze burners are going two apart because between them we're going to need a pump, and we are going to need a lovely uh, smart fluid pipe. I love smart fluid pipes. I don't. They annoy me. Okay, so this first guy is going to be making the awkward potions. So now this arm targets both of these? Good, it can actually, very nice. Uh, so this guy is going to create awkward potions. I guess I could just ensure that it only creates awkward potions. And then you, my friend, are going to be making potions of strength. And now I have to figure out how to power this gear here. <laughs> good rhymes. Ironically, the gear gets powered to the gearbox. Ta-da! Look at my G this doesn't look good, I get it, but then watch this, a boom, bam, bam, looks a little better. Not great, but it has improved. And I think that's good, again? It's like, that's functional, it's correct? But we'll find out. It's not heated yet, now it is. So that should be making awkward potion, the awkward potion goes in here, and that's a potion strength. Okay, almost done. Well, all in all, this is a finished product here. All you'd have to do is grab yourself another smart pipe. Yes, smart pipe and a not-so-smart pump. Make sure that we're doing, what is it, strength? 
Gus uh, potions. And then easy as pie, right into a spout. Get yourself a depot. And then from here, you can handle your input, output, however you'd like. All you have to do is just make sure that cog is powered. Once again, I'm not going to, like, schematic this because I think it's too it's too subjective, right? Because the main thing is you have your, like, what is this, 9 by 9 by 9 box? Oh, okay. So a 10 by 10 by 10 box, but 9 by 9 by 9 on the end, or whatever it is, okay? It's this box, all right? 10 that way, 10 that way, 10 that way. Big box. And then a genuinely generic crop farm your mixer into a mixer just make sure t your blaze burners are powered which you can actually do as you saw with the blaze rod output so i feel like schematicing this is going to be way too restrictive right same thing i felt with this one too it's a bunch of like basic farms combined together i don't want to schematic those so yeah i mean i guess i just want to see it in action though before i declare it complete dinner all right that's a potion of strength filled up right there beautiful beautiful and then we just take our cinder flower, drop it on there, and what do we get? Redstone, baby! I know this isn't a modular farm. I mean, I guess you could add more blaze burners and you can add blaze spawners and you can add more nether wart, so I guess that's modular. But like I said, if you're making this farm, especially in the overworld, um, you're already at the end of the game. All right, all right. As promised, we're going to do cobble, iron, gold, quartz farms because a ton of people asked, you know, iron farms with a fast gravel washer. We want fast cobblestone generator that doesn't drop items on the ground. I think people are asking for like, yeah, all in one cobble farm. So everything that cobble can produce, we're not going to do that, but we're going to do like the, the practical ones and we're going to try to make it compact. We're going to try to make it nice. The first order on my list is pretty easy, a cobblestone farm that does not drop items on the ground. Now, I made something similar to this in my Arcane Engineering series, but I don't know if it actually works anymore. I'm not sure if they patched out the portable storage interface, like, upwards connection, because there's this whole thing where portable storage interfaces on the center of a machine facing into each other would just connect and kiss forever. So, I, I that didn't work in something else I tried, so... We're going to see, but it, this machine might not work. But that's what I'm here to test. So we want it underneath and in the center. So we're going to just kind of build up this little brace here. There we go. So, whoops, I mean this little brace here. So when this thing turns, it will spin this around the center of the machine. And boy, did I have a fancy little design for it that I don't really remember. That it was a spinning cobblestone contraption farm. Uh, how did I do it? You know what, then? I, you know what? I've already tried something like this before. Let's try something different. Let's try something different. I have an idea that might be uh, with a cart assembler. I may have, like, seen this idea before already. I think I did. I don't remember where. But it was a cart that, like, went back and forth like this. There was a wall of cobblestone generation here. And then the portable storage interface would connect over here. We're going to lock rotation on this. You always want to lock your rotation. And then we'll grab ourselves the minecart and build up. I guess for now, we can try it with just one row of drill. Because portable storage should always lock the movement of this thing, right? Like, it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't immediately go flying. Oh, right, I, I wanted it to be on this. That, sh that should be the diagonal. Oops, that. Okay, so then this guy should slide forward. Stop. That's totally the wrong orientation hold on did i get the right orientation there we go uh-huh so the drills would mine cobblestone that generates here we're about to learn how very little joseph knows about minecart stuff this is kind of an area that i am not so expertise in i guess does it mine that dirt block that stopper block well it might if i put it down correctly yes okay i think i'm making things too complicated here are things called controller rails, and they are directional, like that. There you go. Okay, let's let's check this one out, right? This should just go back and forth real easy. Where's the portable storage interface? Oh no! Oh no! It does go back and forth, which is exactly what I want. Okay, now you have that glued all up. Oh, I didn't lock rotation. That's all right. Always lock rotation, kids. Because otherwise it'll freak out when you don't. Okay, and these kiss. So then all there has to be is just cobblestone generating on this block here. Alright, what if I put, like, cobblestone here? Does it mine it? 
Oh, cool. Okay, the whole machine just kind of pauses to mine it. That's kind of sick. Now I actually need to design a vertical cobblestone generator. I don't exactly know how to do that, actually. Like, I know there's a way. There's certainly a way. Okay, I think I'm tapping into my old roots of Hypixel Skyblock. And definitely not just following a tutorial on YouTube, but I do remember making these vertical kind of cobblestone farms back when I did actually play Skyblock. And they involved this water wall design along with kind of a weird lava wall. Um, and the thing to consider with the lava wall was that it had to be... Um, like, you had to have a lava source on each uh, relevant block, right? So... Everything has to fall at the same time, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. So, I think I've got something that probably works. We're gonna find out once I put in the lava, though. I should probably disable this thing. Um, yeah. Don't want this guy going crazy. So then, it's like a source block like that, and then that creates cobblestone there, and then source blocks like that, and it creates cobblestone there. Source blocks like that, cobblestone... Source blocks, cobblestone. Nice. Although, I guess we can't reach the cobblestone up there. But then, the idea would be that, uh... Let's see, we get a cart assembler down. Bonk. And then we get a cart down. I only need one of these in my inventory. Bonk. And then, we just put enough drills and linear chassis on this thing. To be the right height. Now go, my creation. Hey, but it works! There we go. Cobblestone generator. It doesn't drop any items on the ground. It's not even a spinny farm. It's a little contraption farm. And I feel like it's well-timed. I mean, obviously, as we start taking items out of it, the timings will get worse. Just in case, I'm going to put this little item in a chest. And then, I mean, I can't see what's inside of it because I didn't put chests on it. But, uh, that surely is fast. And, of course, it could be made faster by reducing the length of the track as well. I just wanted to have enough time to build and kind of show it off working. Super cool. And you could always make it taller, too. Like, that's what's fun about this. This could be 100 blocks tall, and then it would be really fast and probably very laggy. All right, ready for belt central, because what we want to do is an all-in-one farm with item washers that don't put anything on the ground. So we're going to be using brass tunnels like absolutely nobody's business and shoots and smart shoots. And this is going to be a very uh, late game idea farm, of course. Cobblestone only and a stack at a time. Holy, that's pretty good. Not bad. That's obviously going to go onto a belt line. And cobblestone, I believe itself, doesn't make anything worthwhile. I guess, you know, you can make your mossies and... I guess if you have a diorite farm, but whatever, but whatever. The point is, I'm not making blackstone, I'm not smelting it, we're just going to go for crushing and move on with that farm. I'm just going to make the assumption here that the intention of this all-in-one is for gold, quartz, like the things that are produced from gravel and sand, not from actual straight cobblestone. Alrighty, so here we've created gravel. And we need gravel for the ability to turn it into iron and flint and clay, but we also need gravel to turn into sand. So, we are going to do our first... Uh, I'm gonna say we're gonna call this one... Do we do round robin or do we do split? I think because we're doing a stack at a time, we can just do split, right? So we'll create gravel and half of it will go here, half of it will go here, right? And this is a lot of the farm, because we need to split off a ton of our things to make a ton of different things. Now, from gravel, life is pretty easy. I mean, you can technically pack it down into andesite uh, with a lava farm. And you know what? Maybe I'll add an andesite module onto this thing. Why not? Why not? Why not? I'm a nice guy. I can do that. But the big thing, of course, is we're going to be washing the gravel into flint and into iron nuggets. And then, because you, you crush it, you get flint and clay, but that all just turns into sand. So we don't really need to do that concrete powder. No one's farming. Sorry to say. Uh, if you have Farmer's Delight integration, you can do this. So this gravel is going to Washtown. And Washtown is pretty fantastic because you can make a very fast gravel washer. Um, actually, you know what? No. This gravel is going to Washtown. This gravel is just going to continue the line of crushing wheels. Because this will have to divert here so I could have the crushing wheels here. Yeah, okay. 
So you get turned into sand. You get sent along your merry way to become flint and iron. And actually, now that I want to do an andesite module, we are going to need another line of gravel for actually putting that into the compacting recipe. Uh, so what we could do is we could just take a basin here and drop it there. So now, or maybe actually like here, because it'll be closer to where we're actually processing like flint and stuff. So what this will do is if all three lanes are open, it will split some of the gravel into here. But if that gravel's already filled up, it won't. Without adding too much more headache for us, we're able to kind of regulate the flow. Because that's what this is all about, right? An all-in-one farm is not exactly a difficult thing to make. It's more of like regulating the flow of items and seeing how small you can make it. But I'm not exactly going for the tiniest. If I was, I'd be using millstones. Now, for this basin, I am going to say, look, if you want infinite lava, there are a million ways to get it. The best way is a giant pool of lava. And I don't know if I want to deal with that right now. So we're going to take a bit of a cop out and I'm going to use a creative tank uh, just to fill in where the lava would go. Just because, okay, let's think about it. There are too many ways to get an infinite amount of lava, and I don't want to cover all of them today. Maybe I'll do like a fluid video. Would you guys like that? A video all about create mod fluids and how to get them infinitely and, and what their deal is. And you know what? We're actually going to put a depot here. Because the actual fastest way to do washing is on a depot. And the depot itself needs to be separated from the rest of the network. So we're going to actually have this weird little thing where the depot goes here and a mechanical arm goes here. It's going to take off of that and put onto that. Okay. That's how that works. Uh, because, oh, actually, this guy needs to be further away. This is, I'm trying to make this as fast as it can go without dropping items onto the ground. And this is what we're doing. It's a little complicated, but it's a fan here, it's a fan here. And then we need a fan underneath of it. And this is as fast as you can go. Uh, am, I on, am I on a version with waterloggable leaves? Because that's the best way to do this. Oh, please tell me I'm in a version with waterloggable leaves. I am in a version with waterloggable leaves. You better be in a version with waterloggable leaves because this is the best way to do washing. Because it's fantastic and everyone loves it. So the reason this works is because if you hit a depot with washing, it washes. Here, I'll demonstrate. If you hit the depot directly, right, it'll wash. And since the item is technically sitting on top of the depot, you can actually hit the block above it too. And then the more fans, the better. So there you go. It's not a difficult uh, situation. The only thing, of course, is that we're going to need some way to remove the items from that depot, which is going to be another mechanical arm. So this is a very mechanical arm centric uh, farm. Mechanical arm centric farm, if you know what I'm saying. We can also do a little trick here. Uh... Yeah, we can do a little trick here and say flint goes inside of this little funnel there. I don't want to put this mechanical arm. I mean, there's no really like good slash bad place to do it. I suppose we'll probably want it to be in line with whatever cog line this thing is based off of. Um, and I think I know how to do that. We could do this and then... Well, hold on. Let's be nice about things. I think it'll look nicer to do a chain drive into shafts. I guess for this, just to show things off, I'm going to use drawers, just because drawers are a really easy way to, you know, show things off. So I will say for, for just for demonstration purposes, we're going to put the drawer like here, just so we can like look at it. So we're going to say take from this depot, deposit here first, and then deposit here, and then power that. And we're going to say prefer uh, first target. So it'll always try to put flint into here before putting flint into the overflow. Okay. That's how we're going to keep things nice and stocked. I am so sad that I can't use these chain drives to extend that over there. But now we do need to actually, like, sit down and say, hey, how are we going to power all this stuff? Now, the only thing that we also need to make sure of is that all these fans are blowing in the right direction, which I admittedly did not make easy for myself right there. Um, in fact, I made it hard for myself. Um, but we'll, we'll see. But this should be the top... And the side fans powered. I just need to actually connect them to a power source, uh, which we can do with more chain drives. A little bit of a chain drive mess. Don't get me wrong. Definitely messy. But once again, um, sometimes the fastest farms really are just very messy. Uh, and then easy enough, we can just gearbox this too. And then that is two things checked off the list we have our iron and flint going in here and then we have an andesite production going here um for now 
I will just shoot out the andesite and uh, put that in a drawer once again so that we can just kind of like look at it later. So we'll have our little staircase entrance here. There we go. So that's just about it for gravel, actually. Gravel is not going to be doing anything now. We're moving on and we're moving forward. We're looking at sand. Sand, sand, sand. Sand is the man. Well, there's two things we can do with sand. One of them's pretty easy. Wash it into clay. Cool. Nice. Simple. Fun. Problem is we could also haunt it down into soul sand, which then turns into its own process of turning into quartz. So let's get that done. What can you do with scoria? Just a little pretty block. I think it makes like chocolate or something. I have no idea. Or chocolate makes it. Who knows? This is actually set up pretty great because I can put a depot here with this guy here and take the flint, which is a byproduct of crushing gravel, and then use, I think it was this mechanical arm that takes the uh, gravel. No, I could use this mechanical arm. Yes, yes, that puts everything away and have it also look for taking the filtered flint off of this thing and then cycling it through. So we're gonna redo this guy for the millionth time. Take from here, take from here, prefer here, and deposit there as well. And then as far as clay goes, again, I'm not super stressed about it, right? Clay is a good byproduct, but, uh, you know, you leave this thing running for long enough and you'll produce enough of it not to need to wash your sand and there are more, like, important things to turn your sand into. I know I, I mean, I guess we could go and wash sand, but, uh... Uh, feel lazy I don't want to and you don't have to do it I mean you, you don't have to do it like you're gonna get a lot of clay here I mean maybe not that much clay but I also don't want to do another one of these washing setups so we're gonna say this is enough clay all right but to be thorough the haunting and washing for the soul sand I will do in a really annoying and lengthy way look this might be the fastest way to do it it might not drop any items on the ground, but I sure don't recommend it. But, in any case, if you'll excuse me, I have some time to waste. Well, okay, there we go. The haunting chamber here, which I've blocked off the smoke particles from, and the washing chamber here. The sort of path of destruction is you have your sand getting pushed into here, right? Because all the clay and the flint gets filtered out. And then the sand goes on to the haunting basin. Now, we can't use the bottom of this because we do need to output the soul sand somewhere. So this mechanical arm doesn't just take the sand and wash it over here. So we lose the bottom output here. And uh, so over here, in the name of keeping things all the same speed and not because I'm lazy, I didn't put the bottom uh, fan on this one, but this is just a simple wash. And it ends up in a filtered funnel i also made sure to filter the funnel over here which i forgot to do you need to filter these funnels or the mechanical arms are just going to put like the gravel just boop 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 into here and that's not what we want now i don't think this is hooked up to anything yet and uh, not that it would be difficult to do like that now of course the question is does everything turn in the right direction does everything work is this monstrosity actually an all-in-one cobblestone generator? Well, the only way to find out is to stuff a creative controller onto this bad boy. All right, so let's see. That moves in the right direction. Uh, you aren't moving at all or even a little bit. There we go. Uh, these crushing wheels aren't moving. Let's do that. They power quite a bit. I can't tell if these are all active but i mean it certainly looks like it so i'm gonna say yes that's all functioning the way it's meant to is definitely what's happening and with reckless abandon let's go full speed okay so there we go boom lava and gravels and things oh my gosh they're going everything's going everywhere whoa so this once it gets another piece of flint should start compacting that down and then i guess i just need to loop this running for a second because as fast as these are it's gonna take a second for all the haunting and stuff to go through like there we go there's sand on that it's definitely being haunted at a at a speed of some kind certainly is i suppose it's still not like superbly fast why are you not haunting am i dumb or something so campfires don't work? No, they do. They certainly do. Like, these are the right particles right here. 
How's this going? Mmm, poorly. Uh, is none of this working? Are, 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 are absolutely zero... Well, it doesn't help that that's not a fan, does it? Wait. Why isn't the gravel being washed? Is there... Am I... Do I have an add-on that's bugging something? Because... Pretty sure if I were to break this... Yeah, no. Oh, wait a minute. That's probably what I did. The top fan needs to be higher up. Right, I had a block covering it. That does not sound like it's good. That doesn't sound like it helps. Does it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Oopsies. That's, yeah, that looks, that looks a lot more correct, doesn't it? It's still not washing. What the heck? Well, I guess I could at least, like, open up these, because it seems like the right thing to do. Like, there we go. They're, they're, they're getting haunted. They're getting wa- uh, Okay, hold on. I'm gonna do a relog really quickly, because I think something is, like, not quite right here. What the heck? It's being haunted! It's got the haunting symbols. What is breaking this right now? I'm looking like a fool, but I'm not, I swear, I swear, I swear you could do these things. Wash gravel, flint, iron, easy peasy. What is causing this, actually? I, I've never ran into this issue before. Oh, wait. You're facing the wrong way. I mean, I could fix that, I guess. I suppose, like, some of the fans aren't facing the right way, but surely that couldn't be causing a problem. Like, actually, there's no way that would do anything. I am so confused. This isn't working. Oh, wait. <laughs> this isn't powered. Okay, ho hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. At least we're getting andesite now. Oh, the, 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 that half stack washed like infinite, instantly, infinitely. The, the, uh, the, the, it's not working on depots? Does it, does it not work on depots? What? Okay, that's washing particles. It does work on a depot. What? So, so it worked. It worked right there, you saw it, and I'll do it with a stack, too. We're gonna look at this, we're gonna watch it turn into other items. There we go! What, 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 what is happening over here? I don't... I actually don't know what's causing this. Obviously a bug. Obviously a bug is causing this. If I put it on myself, does it work? No. Is it a direction thing? Are the fans going in the wrong direction or something? Like, is that actually a problem? Your blow, your blow, you suck. So these sides suck? Is that making things buggy? Did that just work? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna have an aneurysm. Okay, so I guess if, if any of the fans suck at all, it breaks literally everything. Now everything is working and it's fine. <laughs> Which one of you guys uh, are the wrong side? Is it you? Is it this side? No, that, that blows. So this side is going the wrong direction. Shoot, this whole side's broken. So what if I just knock out this side? Does it work? Still no. Okay, that's impressive. How do you still suck? Where are you- hold on, where is this all receiving power from? Unless... Is it this? If I do that, does everything work now? Still non-functional. That's impressive. I guess I could remove this random top fan. It was the random top fan. Of course it was the random top fan. <laughs> oh, so silly of me to have thought otherwise that it would not have been that random top fan that didn't have an effect on it. Create mod. Make me mad. Also, I don't think I could reverse the power of this line, which is really unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. That's sad. Oh, this thing isn't powered. That's not helpful, is it? And I'm gonna choose to fix it with cog spam because my brain's a little fried and I don't want to think anymore, Bob. Ta-da! Probably, yep, uh-huh, here we go! Gold and quartz, gold and quartz! And then tons of iron and stuff. Wow, that's- oh my god, look at how fast that is, actually! Whoa! What are we looking at for andesite? That must be a ton. Oh, whoa! Excuse that voice crack, but, uh, this is pretty sick. Wow! This actually functions ex very well! This functions very well! You know what? Okay. 
this took like years off of my life i think like i i've i've lost uh i've lost time i have on this mortal realm and i'm not pleased that like i mean look you could build this thing one step over put gearboxes down and you'd be fine okay do i schematic this no i think it's too much of a mess but I think the design principles are really, really, really simple. And I showed all of them. The only thing I guess I'm going to be doing a schematic for is uh, this tree farm over here. Because it's the only thing that I feel like is good enough to be schematic into something. So I'm sorry. But I, I don't know. I, I guess I could spend a while making this look or even be functional. But I don't want to. All right, but I did it anyways. Okay, I did, I did, because I'm a nice guy. I went and I cleaned things up. It's a little bit cleaner. It still uses the same sort of logic system, but I went through and made it all the schematic. You know, we have a better little vault system with a threshold switch, and I've disconnected this redstone because of how the schematic works, right? If, I, if you uh, had the redstone there at the start, it would immediately blast this away. So this is just so you can uh, check that the farm is ready, and then you place the redstone down on this block. It'll connect everything up. Everything will spring to life. Uh, you know, you're intended to power it through here. I'm leaving the creative motor in just so you guys can see, like, where I intend you to power it. I've gone and changed all the storage to chests so that it could be used in, you know, vanilla Minecraft. And here we are with all of our things. The basin is intended to be filled with lava from the bottom of it. I even have a pump built in right there. Obviously, I didn't grab the creative fluid tank, but that's where the lava is supposed to come from. These guys, I changed to be round robins, which is stack at a time for each of the processes, and I just tried to keep, like, the footprint a little bit tighter, and I don't know, I thought, I think it looks kind of nice the way I've done it, and as you can see, it's really, really fast. I, I think I left it running for, like, 10 minutes, so you're gonna want the drawers mod with it. Like, my recommendation is to get the drawers mod with it and change all these chests to drawers since they're gonna fill up really fast. I even went and made a belts-only version for those of you who don't like using chain drive that's right i made a belts version i schematic out the individual cobble farm i schematic out the individual nine fan chambers both in chain drive and belt model and if that doesn't deserve a like i don't know what does all the schematics for the video can be found on the discord server in the schematics channel could you believe it should be the pinned post in the schematics channel for a while but if not it'll be under a forms post of the same name of this video well if you're watching this part of the video did you know you're like part of like the 10 percent of people like no one makes it this far in the video actually so congrats uh secret ending unlocked